Hi, and welcome to another PowerShell quick tip video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the commandlet get command. Now this commandlet um, might be confused with the show command, but they are in fact different. I'm going to show you guys exactly what's different about them. The get command really lets you kind of be a little bit more specific on what you want to show. And then the show command is a lot more GUI based. Um, so an example of the show command here, just to show you guys what the show command is. I do have a quick tip video on what show command is, so I won't go too, too much into detail. But the show command will basically show you these commands in this GUI, and you can search for them afterwards um, using the search box or selecting the module that you want to look at. Whereas the get command is really going to be through the terminal or through the PowerShell window is where we're going to be getting a lot of the data back. So let's go ahead and let's just start with the basic command of get dash command. Now what this will do, this will actually get us all the different commands that are currently installed on the computer, not necessarily that are in the PowerShell session, but actually all the commands that are installed. So if we actually just go ahead and wrap this up here and do a dot count, we will actually see that this number is quite high. Uh, so if we actually just do that here, we have 17 at 10. Now this is actually not all of the commandlets. Uh, so if you do want all of them, you do have to add this dash all. And this will make sure that it gets every single commandlet. Sometimes there might be duplicate commandlets um, or different executables. We're going to see what the get command actually does a little bit in just a little bit here. So if we add the dash all, we can actually see now that we have 1962 PowerShell commands. Now, if we only wanted to get the commands that are currently loaded in this PowerShell session, what we would do is a get command and then add the parameter of list imported. And if we just run that, we're going to see it looks very, very similar. Um, but if we do a count on this one here, we will see the number is actually much lower. PowerShell doesn't just import all the modules right off the bat by default. So right now we only have 312 commandlets. Uh, that we got from that are currently imported into our PowerShell session. So after that, we can use the get command to be a little bit more specific and do a little bit more of a search of what commands we want to use. So what I like to always do is do the get command. And what we're going to want to do is we're just going to want to look at, let's say I know that the commandlet that I want is a it's set dash something. So I know the verb, but I don't really know the noun. So I would specify the verb parameter and I would put in my verb of set. Then all I really like to do is just do a dash all again here, just to make sure that it's searching all the commandlets on my computer. And there we, we have it. So we have all the commandlets that come back with the set verb. Um, now, of course we can change the verb to be get, and that will get us all the get commands. If we want to see if there's anything with the word start, we could also do that as well. So we could do a lot of different things. All you really need to do is know the verb. Now, let's say you know the noun, but you don't actually know the verb. So we can actually do that as well. So if we do a get command dash noun, now let's say we know that we want to do something with service, but we're not really too sure what we can do with services. So let's do a noun service. Let's just make sure that again that we do our all command here or all parameter, I should say. So here's all the different things that we can do with service. So we can do get new, remove, restart, resume, set, start, stop, and suspend. So that's kind of handy. We will know all the commands that we could really use. Uh, now this does require you to know the noun, which is probably sometimes a bit harder to know the noun than it is to know the verb. I usually like to use the verb searches. Um, but let's say you have an idea of the verb and maybe like the first letter or so. Now doing the just the verb search you might have a lot of extra data that you don't really need. So what you can actually do is do a get command and then a name here. 
And then we're just going to do a get dash s star. So we know that it's a get. We know that it starts with an s for the noun. But we don't quite know what it is. This will actually do a search for everything that starts with get dash s. And that will actually get us everything here. So there's all of our, and it will actually tell us what type of command it is. So it'll tell us that these are aliases, these are functions, and then these are commandlets. All right, so once we actually do that, we actually have one other method of searching, uh, which is very useful if maybe you don't 100% trust your typing skills um, or that you remember exactly how it's spelled. What you can do is do a get command name. And then let's say we wanted to do a get child item, but I didn't spell it properly. I forgot the D here, but then, so if I just do it like this, we're going to notice that we get nothing back. But if I add a parameter of use fuzzy matching, and we run this now, we will see that we actually get quite a few items back. We actually get the commandlet of get child item. We also get get item, get counter, set item, get, so it does a a good job to try to determine what you wanted to get. And then there you can search through the list and be like, okay, I forgot the D and you could use it like that. And then just simply run that one and you would get the commandlet. And then of course, get command just really gets you how to spell out the command, gets you the module of the command. You would then probably use get help to know how to use that command later on. Um, know what type of parameters it takes. You can get what type of parameters it takes with the get command as well, but I find that the get help is much, much easier. I do have a video and a quick tip on the get help. Uh, so if you do need help with that, just check out that video and that will get you started with that for sure. Now, the other things that we can actually do is find a commandlet based on an alias. So let's say you know that an alias that you've used in the past uh, so for me, I'm going to say ls. It's like I've used ls in the past, but I don't really know what commandlet that is. So I can use it in my PowerShell scripts. So if you actually just put get command name ls, we run that. We actually get that it is an alias and it is for get child item. So there we can actually right away understand that if I do ls, it just actually gets a get child item. Now, another thing that I've kind of hinted towards was the get command is you can also find executables that are on your computer. So if we do a get command and we do notepad. Now, if I just run notepad like this, we only get one. But if I add the parameter of all again, because that will search everywhere, we will actually get a little bit more because it gets every instance of that notepad.exe but we can actually even look for Visual Studio Code. If we just put in code here, we will get our Visual Studio Code application. So that can come in handy. I don't know if this still exists. Um, I Explorer, I think that was the name for Internet Explorer. Uh, it does not exist anymore, so that is fine. Um, I believe we should be able to find Edge. Uh, actually, it might be MS Edge is the name of it, I hope. And it does not seem that way. And it did. Okay, there you go. Uh, so here, if you know the name of, of the application, um, you can definitely find it here. If we do run, I believe that that will find us something or run as will find us something. Yeah, the run as application will find us something. So this is very good. If you don't really know the name of the executable, you have a few ideas. You can easily run it in the get command and really get what that is. So I'm just going to put back the code example because uh, we all have Visual Studio code following these tutorials. Um, so another thing that you can do as well is figure out where a commandlet has come from. Find out what module it comes from. So maybe you're working with a team of people 
you guys all have your individual computers. Someone has installed a PowerShell module that you guys think is super useful, but they've installed quite a few modules. They don't really remember what module came with that commandlet. All you'd have to do is do a get command. You put the commandlet that you find interesting. So we're just going to say we find the get child item uh, commandlet interesting. Now, of course, this one is pre built in. Um, so it's not super valid example, but let's say you had a Teams module installed, a Skype module installed, um, the Azure module installed, and there was some commandlet. You're not quite sure where it came from. You just put in the commandlet in the get command and then wrap that and then do a dot module name. And that will give you the name of the module that it was actually imported from. So then the other people can go ahead and download it. Now, there is one other way that we can actually search for commands. Now, this one is quite interesting um, because it can be very useful as it can be not super useful depending on the scenario, really. So it lets you search commands based on parameters. Now, you can search by parameter name or by parameter type. Now, I find that the parameter name isn't as useful as parameter type. So we could put parameter name. Let's see all the commands that have the parameter name computer name. We get quite a few, which is kind of nice. Uh, we can also say, get me all the commands that have the parameter name of name, and we get tons of different things. Now, what is actually very useful is let's say you've ran a command like get net adapter. So we can actually run this. This gets us our wireless adapters here. So what we can actually do is we can actually get the type of this object here. And let me just wrap this here. And we can do a dot PS type names. I think that will get us the results that we want. There it is. So if you wrap the get net adapter and then you specify it at index zero and then you do a dot PS type names, this will get you all the different types of that object that it comes back out here. So what you can actually do is let's say you've done a get net adapter and you want to see what other commandlets can I actually use with the objects that come back from this command. So what commandlets can I use with the output of get net adapter? And you can actually do a get command parameter type. And then here you would just go ahead and you can copy paste this exact line here. And the commands that we can use with the output of get net adapter is actually disable net adapter, enable net adapter, rename net adapter, restart net adapter and set net adapter. So that could be very, very useful if you know the commandlet to get the information and you want to know what other commandlets are out there. Can I use with this output that it gives back to me? This would be a great way to figure that out. Uh, so another example is let's say we're going to use a get service. We want to find out what can we do with the output of get service. So let me just change this to a dash. We already know what the output of get service is, but what can I do with that? Um, so let's just go ahead and let's copy paste this line here. And let's just change the get net adapter to get service. Now, all the things that we can do with the get service output here is actually get service. So we can actually pipe it back to get service. Uh, we can pump it into remove, restart, resume, set, start, stop, and suspend service. So there are quite a few useful things that you can do with the get command parameter type. Um, there might be some use cases in your scenarios where parameter name is sufficient. You can easily find the command that you're looking for. But the parameter type, I think, is very, very useful to know 
If you don't know exactly what you can do with that object, just pipe it into the get command, pipe, um, pass in the parameter type, and that will let you know what where you can use that object in other commandlets. So that is really it for the get command. I hope that kind of really sets the difference between the show command and the get command commandlets. If you guys have any questions or comments, please let me know in the comment section down below. If you guys have a commandlet that you guys would like a video on, please let me know down below as well. Also, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Also, be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.